Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I set up RC model airplanes on Edge TX 2.9. Before we get started, I want to spend just a moment on Edge TX revisions to avoid any confusion. Right now, as you can see on my radio, I'm using Edge TX 2.9.0 Release Candidate 2, and the reason for that is because it is the latest revision of Edge TX 2.9 as of this video. Because it's a release candidate, what that means is they're not quite finished yet. It's not quite ready to be a released version or a final version. So they put it in release candidate stage and ask people to test and look for bugs. So there may be a couple of minor modifications or adjustments to the firmware before it's released in its final state. But functionally, most of the things you'll see in terms of operation, the screens, the buttons, all of that, should remain consistent from release candidate two through the release version of 2.9. Don't fly with release candidates unless you want to experiment. This is a bench setup and a demonstration. That's why I'm happy using a release candidate version of the firmware. Regarding the airframe setup, I'll be using a standard airplane. It's gonna be an aileron one, elevator, throttle, rudder, aileron two, and I'm gonna show you how to set up mode and gain in the event you use a gyro. What I cannot do is take individual questions on specific gyros. All I can really show you how to do is add a mode switch and a gain switch and how you can use those with a gyro. It'll be up to you to figure out the correct channels to use and the correct PPM output settings to use to match up with your gyro. This demo also uses ExpressLRS as the RF technology and it depends on the use of VBAT or RXBAT. So I have pack voltage coming in and that's important as you'll see later. So you do need to have some kind of voltage telemetry if you wanna fully utilize the configuration I'm going to show you. The last prerequisite is that you'll need the flights counter widget by Offer Schmooly installed. I'll have a link in the description on how to get that widget and how to install it. I will not cover widget installation on this video. This is just a configuration video for a model. And then the last caveat that I have is that based on the model that I'm using, my weights and travel and directions may be different than your model. It's important for you to understand how to reverse things, and I will show you how to do that, but just understand the model that I'm using today, the weights and the travel and the directions may be different from yours, and that's okay. That's common in radio control model setups. They're all a little bit different, which is why these options exist on the radio in the first place. Before we get into the radio configuration, I'd like to introduce you to my little benchtop model called RCVR2. This is an invaluable little tool for doing radio setup on the bench. If you wanna work on how to set up mixes or throws or rates or any of that stuff, these little models are hugely helpful because you can do it all right here on your bench. You don't have to worry about damaging your nice planes or fitting your nice plane on your desk. These are available in my Etsy store. There's a link in the description if you'd like to get one for yourself. The first thing you'll need to do is install your receiver in your model and get your receiver bound to your transmitter. You can see I've got mine set up right now. Again, I'm using Express LRS and I'm using binding phrases. I've got plenty of videos on my channel showing how to bind an Express LRS receiver to an Express LRS transmitter. So if you don't know how to do that, go watch those videos and then come back. For my example, I've got a model completely set up with Edge TX, and I do that to save you from having to watch me key through everything. But in case you don't know how to add a new model on Edge TX, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but we will be coming back to this. This is my Express LRS fixed wing template. We will come back to this model, but let me show you how to create a new model in case you don't know. The first thing you'll do is long press the model button, and that will bring you to the model selection screen. And from there, you can press this new model button right here, new model, and then just press the blank model button. And once you do that, Edge TX will create the framework for a new model. And you can look at that framework by short pressing the model button and that brings you into the model settings. So in this case, it's model 47, that's my new model. No labels assigned and there's no configuration in here really outside of basic inputs and mixes. So see Edge TX creates your basic inputs for you and it creates a basic mix layout for you as well based on your defaults, in my case, AETR. Okay, so that's how you create a new model, and that will be used as your sketch pad for all the things I'm about to show you. With the new model created, let's go back to my original template and we'll start walking through the configuration. Now that you know how to create a new model, I'll go back to the one that I already configured so you don't have to watch me key everything in. We'll do that by long pressing on the model button, and when we release that, we'll be brought to the model selection screen, and I'll look for my fixed wing template that we talked about just a little while ago. 
And then I'm going to double tap that and that'll bring up my model configuration. Okay, so far we've installed a receiver in our model, we've powered it up, we bound it to our transmitter, and we created a new model. Now we're ready to actually start doing configuration work. The first thing we'll do is get our telemetry sensors. We'll get there by pressing the model button and then page left. And that brings us right to the telemetry screen. And as you can see on my screen, I've already got a list of sensors active on the radio, but if you need to add your own, the easy way to do that is to scroll down until you see this discover new button. And when you press that, Edge TX will pull in any telemetry sensors that are made available by the receiver. Very important to do this first because so many things later on in the configuration depend on the presence of those sensors. All right, so that's step number one in the configuration, get your telemetry sensors. Step number two is to start building some logic. We'll do that by clicking on the little cloud icon, which brings us to the logic screen. The first one is what I call my no sag voltage alert. The idea behind the no sag voltage alert is if I'm out flying around and my battery voltage dips below a pre-configured level, the radio will alert me, but it's not just if it dips below, it's if it dips below and stays there for a little while. Because when you're flying, if you hit the throttle, there's a good chance you could have a little bit of voltage sag, but that doesn't mean you're ready to land just yet. And what I've figured out over time is that a six second delay below my threshold seems to be a pretty good number to get me back on the ground at a voltage level at rest that is appropriate for storage. Let me walk you through how this logic works. My function is A is less than X. My first variable is RX bat, which is the sensor that represents pack voltage on my Express LRS receiver, RX bat. The second value is 22.5 volts. And what that represents is my floor for a six cell battery. So if you take 22.5 and divide it by six, you get 3.75. So at 3.75 volts per cell, I wanna know what's going on. I wanna know that. The third parameter is an AND switch, and I use that because my SH up is my arm switch. And the reason this is important is because if I'm working with the model on the bench and I don't have my throttle lock disabled, so in other words, the throttle is locked, that means I'm not flying. And that means I really don't care what the battery state is and I don't want the radio chirping at me. So the only way this is interesting to me is if I have a battery voltage of 22.5 and my throttle lock is disabled. So if those two conditions are true and that lasts for more than six seconds, I kind of want to know about that. All right, so that's condition one, that's L01. The second condition is L02. And all this one says is when my pack voltage is greater than 22.5, I don't care. I don't need any alerts from the radio, so don't tell me anything. So in this case, if pack voltage is above 22.5, L2 doesn't go active. And then finally for L3, I have an OR switch that says if the pack voltage is above 22.5 or I have the throttle lock on. If either one of those is true, I want L3 to be active. So in my case right now, the SH switch is in the down position. That's why this is lit. We can see on my telemetry screen up top, my RX bat is below that threshold of 22.5. So if I go back and disable my throttle lock, that logical switch turns itself off and I'll show it to you right now. We'll press model and go back to our logical switch setup and I'm gonna turn my SH switch to the forward position, and that means my plane is armed. So you can see when I did that, L03 went off. Now L01 should come on. There it is, because for six seconds, my L SH switch has been away, and my voltage has been less than 22.5. That's when I want the alert. If I lock my throttle, the alert is shut off. So that's how with this logic, I flip back and forth between something that's interesting and something that's not interesting. I'm not interested if my voltage is higher than 22.5 or if my throttle is locked. If that's the case, L03 is active. I am interested if my flight pack is below 22.5 and my throttle is unlocked after six seconds. So one more time, L01 should go on after a few seconds. And when that happens, L01 goes active and that switches L4 from being off to being on. So L04 is the thing we take action on. We'll get to that in just a minute. The next logical switch I have is L05 and it's a simple AND switch. All I'm looking for out of L05 is to tell me when my throttle is armed 
and when I have telemetry simultaneously. And I'll show you in a little while where I use that condition. So the idea here is that I have a receiver that's sending telemetry and I've armed the plane. That's the condition in which L05 goes active. And because I have telemetry, if I flip my S8 switch forward, you should see L05 activate. So I'll do that now. So there's SH forward, and as you can see, I have telemetry. So in that condition, L05 is active. All right, so far we've paired our receiver and got our sensors. We've taken care of the logic. The next thing we'll do is configure the model. And we'll do that by clicking on the model setup button, which is the first icon right here on the left. In that setup screen, you can add your model name. In my case, I used Express LRS FW template, and you can click on that field and edit it however you want. So in my case, I just deleted EM. I can press the caps lock and put my EM back and press the little check mark here on the keyboard, and there's how we name our plane. The next thing you can do if you choose is add a label. If you don't wanna use labels, that's fine. You can leave it as unlabeled, or no label checked at all. In my case, I use the test label and that's how I find my demo models really quickly on this radio. You can also select a model image. In my case, I use the Edge TX logo. Now the ADC filter always gets a lot of play. Because this is a basic video, I'm not gonna get into all the parameters around the ADC filter. The only thing that I'll say is if you have a device that has a PID loop, you probably wanna turn it off. And if you're not using a device with a PID loop, you probably wanna turn it on. So for example, if you're connected to iNav, Betaflight, or even a gyro, go ahead and turn it off. If you're not connected to any of those things and your receiver goes direct into a servo, you might wanna leave it on, but go ahead and do your homework and decide for yourself what's important to you. I'm using a RadioMaster Ranger External Express LRS module, so I'll click on External RF. For mode, I use CRSF. For baud rate, 400K. And that's really all I configure in here regarding the RF settings themselves. We're gonna back all the way out to the main screen, press the system button, and bring up the Express LRS Lua, and I'll show you the rest of the relevant Express LRS settings. 333 hertz is my packet rate between the transmitter and receiver. For my telemetry ratio, I have it set on standard, which defaults to 1 to 128 using this packet rate. And then the last thing I have that's really important is the switch mode, which I set at eight channel. And then for power, you can determine your own power settings. 50 milliwatts is fine for line of sight, but if you think you need something higher than that, of course, go ahead and set that. And it's not a bad idea to turn on dynamic power as well, because the transmitter will bring the power down to the lowest level necessary to do the job. And that's about all you really need to know about the Express LRS settings I'm using in this setup. Let's go back to the model settings. We'll do that by long pressing the return key and then pressing it again. That brings us back to the main page. Then we'll click on model and we're right back where we started. Trainer settings are somewhat specific. In my case, I'm not setting up for a trainer, so we'll leave that off. I'm gonna press the timer button and show you why I do the logic switches first. I have a timer set up called flight timer. My mode is based on throttle. Throttle percent and throttle start are some other options you might wanna look into, but I just like throttle, it works for me. So I set it on throttle. And then notice my switch is L05. Remember, L05 is that logic switch that says, only go active if we have telemetry and the throttle lock is disabled. Now the reason I do that is because if I'm on the bench and I'm messing around with my radio and I bring my throttle up while I test something, I really don't want my total time to accrue and I don't want my timer to really change. So what I rely on is for the telemetry to be present, which means I'm actually plugged into a receiver and I unlock the throttle, which is a very high indicator I'm probably ready to fly. That's why I use that logical switch number five and I'll give you one more look at that real quick. Logical number five is just an AND switch that says when the throttle lock is disabled and the telemetry is present, then L05 should go active. Regarding your flight time, your mileage might vary. In my case, just for the example, I chose seven minutes. You might be at five, you might be at eight. It really just depends on your particular model setup, your prop, your power, all that stuff. So uh, for the demo, I have mine set at seven minutes. And for the direction, I have mine set to show remaining. You can also show the time elapsed as well if you wanna do that, but I like a countdown timer for mine. And then I have a minute call enabled, and all that does is every time I hit a one minute mark, the radio says, hey, you're at five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, and so on. 
And then I also get a beeping countdown once I hit 10 seconds. So once I hit the 10 second mark on my timer, the radio will chirp at me a little bit. And then I have persistent turned off because I really don't want the flight timer to be persistent over reboots or over changing the model. So if I turn the radio off, my flight timer essentially gets reset. And that makes sense because you're not going to be in the air and turn your radio off and then say, oh, wait, I lost my timer. You got much bigger problems if you turn the radio off. So for my case, for the flight timer, I leave persistent set to off. But that's just my flight timer. I also set up a persistent timer on timer two, and I call that one total time. That uses the same start parameters as my flight timer, where I have throttle and L05, but notice my time is zero here, and that means it counts up. That's my total accrued time on an airframe when these conditions are active. I don't have a minute call, and I set it to silent, but notice under persistence, I have it set to manual reset. That means as I fly, when the conditions are true that my throttle is active, I have telemetry, and the throttle is disarmed, then the total time accrues on this plane. And you can see that on the main screen on this timer right here that says total time, 34 minutes and 18 seconds. So that's my total timer. I don't use timer three at all, but feel free if you have another use case that works for you to go ahead and turn it on. For pre-flight checks, I, this is where you can set the switches that you wanna be notified about when you power on. In my case for pre-flight, I want a little bit of information about the throttle state. So if I try and power on and my throttle stick is not all the way down, I want the radio to say, hey man, put your throttle stick down because that's the right thing to do when you're loading the model. So you get that when you turn this switch to the on position. And then I also alert on three switches, my rate switch, my gyro mode switch, and my throttle lock. I want all of those to be down before I activate this model. Now I know a lot of you may prefer for your switches to be away before you activate, and that's fine. If you wanna do that, you want your rate switch to be high or in the up position, you can just press this button in a couple of times until that arrow points up. And if you do that, then you'll be alerted when the SB switch is not in the up position. For me, I like mine to be notified when I'm in the down position. Also for center beep, if you want, say for example, your pots to beep when you hit the center position, you can activate those right here. And I have that set up on S1 and S2. Both of them beep and give me a little haptic feedback when I hit center. I don't turn center beep on for anything else. The next thing under the model setup are enabled features. And what that allows us to do is turn features on and off. Notice up top, I do not have the helicopter tab, that's disabled. I have my model setup and then we go direct to flight modes. But I can go into enabled features and say for this particular model, I want the heli setup to be either following the global settings, which are in the radio setup, or I can say, I don't care what global says, I just want it turned on for this model. So when I do that and I press return, notice the helicopter tab shows up now. So that's enabled features. You can turn all these tabs on and off depending on your use case. In my case, I'm gonna just turn the heli tab back off because I'm not using that on a fixed wing setup. So I just turn it off. All right, that wraps up model settings. Feel free to adjust to suit your needs. This is what works for me. The next thing we'll do is take a look at flight modes and you'll see there is a little bit happening here. I'll just walk you through it. This is a section you could completely skip and your model will work just fine. For me, I have a few tricks up my sleeve and this is the setup I like to use when I have a gyro. For flight mode zero, notice that I have the title gyro off. I have no fade in or out time and I turn off trim for throttle. T5 and T6. Now you might say, John, why are you turning off trim for throttle? And it's because I fly electric. I don't fly any internal combustion motors. If you fly internal combustion, you definitely wanna leave that one on. I don't, I only fly electric. So therefore I don't need the throttle trim switch to trim my engine. Nor do I need trim for T5 and T6 unless I had additional servos that required trim. Remember, we're talking about AETRA on this model, okay? So because of that, I've turned off my throttle and T5 and T6. All right, so that's flight mode zero. Flight mode one, this is one that I call stabilizer on, and that's why the name is here, stab on. In that mode, I activate it by putting my SC switch in the middle position. You can use any switch you want. For me, I like my gyro mode switch to be SC. That's why I have SC middle. There is no fade in or out time. And notice the trims are a little bit different. Throttle T5 and T6 are also turned off. If they were turned on, they'd be lit like these are, but they're turned off. And the other thing that I do is I set the trims for rudder, elevator, and aileron to use the trims from flight mode one only. 
What that means effectively is that I have one set of trim in flight mode zero, and I have a different set of trim in flight mode one. I'll explain that in just a few minutes. Finally, flight mode two is auto level mode. And when I click on that, the title is auto level and the switch that activates auto level is SC up. There's no fade in or out time. And again, with the trims, I have my throttle turned off, T5 and T6 turned off, and then the rudder, elevator, and aileron all use trims from flight mode two only. Now, let me show you how that manifests itself while I'm flying. We're in flight mode zero, which is gyro off, and the SC switch is in the down position. As I move my aileron trim over to the right, and I'm gonna exaggerate the movement here just so you can see, okay? So I've moved my aileron trim all the way over to the right. Now, what if I don't want that to be the case when I turn the stabilizer on? So let's say I turn the stabilizer on by pushing my switch to the mid position, and notice the stabilizer is now on and my trim reverted back to the center position. Now let's say, for example, I wanna push that, this one all the way over to the left. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter what your reason is, let's just say you wanted to do it. So now what I've done is I've pushed my aileron all the way over to the left, and if I go back to gyro off, notice my aileron trim bounces back over to the right, because we're using the trims for FM zero or flight mode zero only. When I put my switch in the middle position or stabilize mode, now my aileron trim is all the way over here on the left. Now, if I put my switch in the auto level mode, notice my trim goes back to center. Now you might say, John, what's the use case for this? Let me explain it. Let's say I'm flying around gyro off, meaning the gyro is not involved in my flying at all. And while I'm flying 3D, I want a couple of clicks of down elevator right, a down elevator, I push forward on T2, my elevator trim now is down, so that's the equivalent of pushing forward on a stick a little bit, but when I'm in auto level mode, I don't want any trim at all because I've spent all that time making sure my gyro is perfectly centered and aligned and calibrated to fly the plane flat. So if I put it in auto level mode, I don't want that trim to be conveyed to the gyro. So notice how in that mode, it comes back down to center. It's just a little trick that allows you to set up different trims for different flight modes. If you don't want this kind of complexity in your configuration, just skip over this step. You don't have to do it. But if you're ever off flying and you say, no, when I'm in auto level mode, I need that trim to be exactly at zero. But when I turn my gyro off, I like to have a couple clicks of forward elevator or, you know, maybe a couple clicks of left aileron for whatever reason, you know, whatever your reasons are. That's one way you can have different trims for different flight modes. So I do it all the time, just as a matter of course. All right, that's it for flight modes. Next, we'll talk about inputs. We'll get there by pressing the model button and we'll press page right two times. And that brings us to the input screen. And you can see on my input screen, this is where I define rates and expo. So if you want dual rates or triple rates, this is where I recommend you configure them. Do it on the input screen. In my case, on my aileron, I've got three different rates set up. 50%, 40%, and 35%. Notice that my inputs are all connected to the aileron stick. Pay very close attention to that little icon right there. That's the important one because that icon indicates your aileron stick right here. So this input is connected to the aileron stick. It's got a weight of 50 and it's active when the SB switch is in the up position. Here is my SB switch, and as I move that to the up position, you can see that line activate when that SB switch is moved up. When I put the SB switch in the mid position, my mid rates are active, and when I put it in the down position, my low rates are active. I'll give you a quick look at just the aileron settings so you can see how the edit screen appears when you edit these. Under input name, I've got AIL for aileron. Under line name, I don't use anything at all. For source, it's the aileron stick. That's the important one. Pay close attention to that icon. Use this icon, the stick. And as for weight, you set that for whatever's appropriate on your model. Now remember, at the beginning of this video, I said your rates may differ from mine. In my case, I'm using a little RCVR2 model and I want my weight to be set at 50. You may need something bigger than that. You may need something smaller than that. Don't get too wrapped around the axle. Use this number to set the value that's appropriate for your model. Next up, I have a switch which activates my rate. In my case, the high rates are activated by SB up. 
And then for curve, I like Expo and I have my Expo set at 40. This is another one of those options that's gonna be dependent on you. Don't just use 40% and think you're good to go. Expo is a very personal decision. You have to set yours up the way it works best for you. In my case, for this example, I just happen to be using 40. I could just as easily set that to zero and have no Expo at all. And you can see when I set it to zero, my curve flattens right out. But for the example, we'll leave it set at 40. Okay, so high rates get an Expo of 40 in this example, and you can see the Expo kicking in right there on the graph. Now, if you need to know how to add an extra line, it's very simple. Click on one of the lines and then hit Insert After. And when you do that, the radio will add a line for you to edit. So you can add all the rates that you want just by long pressing and saying Insert After or Insert Before, depending on what you need. So in my case, I just added two more lines to the aileron inputs. I don't need them, so I'll delete them, but I just wanted to show you how to add lines and I'll show you how to take them away. If you want to take a line out, you click on it and hit Delete and that line's gone. We'll click it again and delete, and now that line's gone. So we're back to our standard three rates for ailerons, and you can see I've got something similar for elevator. Notice on throttle, I don't really use a curve for throttle. I don't use rates for throttle. So I just want full throttle linear the whole time. So I have no dual rate set up for throttle, which means it doesn't matter what position I put this switch in, the throttle is always active. And the reason for that is because there is no switch definition in this configuration. See, the switch is just dash dash, and there's only one line. So the way Edge interprets that is he wants this active all the time. And that's true, that's what I want. And here's my rudder set up for high, mid, and low. So there's high rates, mid rates, and low rates. That's your inputs. That's how you set up your dual rates or triple rates, in this case, on Edge TX. Next, we're gonna take a look at the mixer. You guys might be surprised at this one. I explained this so many times, but just in case you're new to Edge TX, I wanna make sure I make this really clear. When you go into the mixer page, this is where you link your input to the channel output on your receiver. So this says CH1, and what that means in Edge TX parlance is that is pin one on a PWM receiver, or channel one if you're in a serial stream going into a serial re receiver like CRSF or SBUS. Okay, so this is channel one, or in the case of PWM, pin one. Straight up. <laughs> okay, so I'm saying I want my aileron stick to come out on pin one. And by the way, this is just one aileron. I have two ailerons. So I'll show you how that works in just a minute. I want my elevator to come out on pin two. I'll show you what the edit looks like for this. The source, now remember I talked about icons? This icon is different. That is not the elevator stick. That is the input, input stick. Here's the icon, here's the secret to it. You see this little icon right here? That's inputs, okay? And notice the inputs, they use the stick. On the mixer, we don't want to use the stick, we want to use the input. So that's how you feed your inputs into the mixer. You say that I want to use the source input, and if I click on inputs icon right here, you can see I'm filtered down to the only inputs I've defined, which are aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. So in my case, I want to use the elevator input to feed the mixer. Okay, now I can adjust weights if I want, and I can adjust things like my Expo if I want, but I don't usually adjust Expo in the mixer. You can see in my configuration, if I wanna adjust Expo, I normally do that in my inputs. Okay, so we'll go back to the mixer, and this is my mix setup. Aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Now I told you I had a second aileron, here's how we do that. And I also added one mix just to show you how a mix works. So down here on channel six, I have my second aileron. And what that means is that I also want my aileron stick output on pin number six, on PWM pin number six, or if I were in some kind of serial receiver like CRSF or SBUS, it would come out in the serial stream on channel six. You'll also notice I've got a mode and gain. We'll get to those in just a moment. Okay, so very basic mix setup. Now let me show you a very simple mix. I always say when it comes to creating mixes, the idea is to focus on the thing that needs to be fixed by the thing that does the fixing. So let's talk about a coordinated turn, for example. Let's say you're out flying around, you move your aileron around and you forget to move your rudder or you just want a little bit of rudder coupling with your aileron stick. The idea there is as you pull the aileron, you're saying to the radio, hey, when I move this aileron, I want you to manipulate my rudder just a little bit for me. And of course, I assigned a switch to that. 
As you can see, unless the SD switch is in the up position, nothing happens on this mixer. But if I move that SD switch into the up position, now that mix line is active, and if I move my aileron, you can see output on the mixer. Let's bring the model in so you can see what's going on here. All right, my SD switch is in the up position, which means this mix line is active, and you can see that in the mixer because it's highlighted, so this line is active. And remember what I said, what is the thing that needs to be fixed? In my case, if I want a coordinated turn, the thing that needs to be fixed is my rudder. So I add to the thing that needs to be fixed, which is the rudder, the thing that does the fixing, which is the aileron stick. Now let's see what happens with this mix. When I push my aileron stick all the way over to the left-hand side, you can see the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down, and my rudder moves to the left. See, that's a coordinated turn. See, if I push my aileron to the left, my rudder, you can maybe see the arm moving a little bit easier, but my rudder is moving as well. If I push the SD switch to the down position, that turns that mix line off, and now when I move my aileron, that rudder doesn't move. See, moving the ailerons, the rudder's not moving at all. We'll push the SD switch into the up position, that'll activate the mix. And now when I push my aileron stick over to the side, my rudder is now moving again. Okay, so that's a very basic, simple mix in case you wondered how to do mixes on Edge TX. The next section has to do with Express LRS arming and with gyros. With Express LRS, they've asked for channel five or aux one to be the arm indicator for a receiver. If you want to understand more about it, there's a link in the description to the Express LRS wiki. I suggest you go read up on it. But if you're going to use the ARM capability for the Express LRS receiver, you need to put that on channel five. And what I do is I link that one to my ARM switch. So SH is my ARM switch, and I use a value of negative 100 because I want my arming to occur when I push the switch away. So I have arming for Express LRS on channel five, I use the SH switch and a weight of negative 100. Let me show you the Express LRS configuration so you can see how this works. We'll back out of our model setup, press system and Express LRS. Pay attention right here at the top. Right now it just says RM Ranger. That's all it says. When I unlock my throttle using my SH switch and my arm switch, you'll see this status change to armed. What that means is that we can no longer make changes to the radio configuration via Lua and dynamic power is active. If we disarm Express LRS, you can now make certain changes to your Express LRS configuration and dynamic power is deactivated. If your throttle lock relies on you pulling your arming switch toward you, you might want to leave that value at positive 100 instead of negative. But in my case, because I want arming to be away, negative 100 is the correct PPM pulse was sent to the Express LRS receiver to tell it that it's now armed. All right, next up are the gyro configuration settings. Now, a lot of you are gonna look at this and say, wait a minute, my gyro uses channel five. Yeah, that's a thing. And a little bit more advanced than I can get into on this video. In my case, I'm using an A3 Super 4 by Hobby Eagle. And what that means is I can configure my mode switch to be on any channel I want. That's one of the reasons I like them with Express LRS so much. In my case, I assign my mode switch to channel seven. And when we edit channel seven, here's what that looks like. I have my name set to mode and I have my source set to SE and that's it. Pay attention to this channel monitor. As I move my SC switch to the mid position, it moves to zero or 1500 US microseconds. If I push the SC switch all the way forward, it moves to negative 100 or 988 microseconds. You don't need to have three lines in your mixer for your mode switch. You just need one. And it knows if you're moving that switch, it says, oh, he changed it. And oh, he changed it again. That's all you need to do. You don't need a complex three line configuration in your mixer. Don't do that. Just set it as source SC, put the weight at 100 and you're good to go. You now have a three position switch that any receiver can send commands to a gyro with. What you do need to understand for your particular gyro is what happens when you're at 988 PPM US. Is that on? Is that off? Is that stabilized? Is that auto level? That's what you need to understand. And you need to configure either a curve or overrides in your special function to set the correct PPM US rate for your particular gyro. And another reason I like the A3 Super 4 so much is because in the A3 Super 4, I can set the gyro mode based on what the radio is sending. So I don't have to worry about all that override or curve business. I can simply go into the gyro configuration and say, when I'm at 2012, I want you off. 
when I'm at 1500, I want you on stabilize mode. And when I'm at 988, I want you in auto level mode. That's why I like the A3 Super 4 in conjunction with Express LRS. All right, that's it for the mode switch. The next thing we'll talk about is gain. So I have my gain on channel eight. Again, you can assign whatever channel in the A3 Super 4 to your remote master gain that you want. So in my case, I'm using channel eight. And as you can see on the S2 knob, we can start all the way at 988, which is full left, full counterclockwise. And then as I move that dial through the middle, we hit 1500 US. And as we come all the way to the right, we hit 2012 US. I can tell you on the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4, that gyro interprets the movement from 988 to 2012 as zero to 100%. However, some gyros don't wanna see a value below 1500 or 0%. So in order to accommodate that, here's a simple fix. All you have to do is go into your weight and reduce it to 50%. Just set it at 50% and then set your offset to 50%. Now what happens when we click out of there is when I dial my S2 all the way to the left, it stops at 1500. So that's 0%. And now as I bring my S2 all the way up to the right hand side, it stops at 2012. Some gyros like to see that as their understanding of zero to 100%. So pay attention to your gain settings in your gyro to understand what you need. You're probably gonna have to read your book on your gyro to understand that. So I'm just showing you a technique you can use right here in the mixer without anything else to set your PPM pulse width to always be 1500 or higher. That's all we're doing here. All right, that's it for the mix page. The next thing we'll do is take a look at outputs. At the moment, I have this model set up correctly, which means if I pull down on my elevator, I expect that elevator to go up and it does. If I push forward on the elevator, I expect it to go down and it does. If I pull right on my aileron stick, I expect the right aileron to come up, which it does. And I expect the left to go down and it does. On my rudder, if I pull to the right, I expect the rudder to come right, and it does. If I push it left, I expect it to go left, and it does. So this model is set up correctly. But if you have a scenario where your outputs are not working correctly, let's say for example, you pull down on your elevator stick, and instead of coming up, your elevator goes down. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna edit this output, click on edit, and I'm gonna just hit this button that says inverted. So when I do that, and now I pull down elevator, my elevator also goes down, that's wrong. So if you need to reverse it, here's where you do your servo reversing on Edge TX. Very convenient, they just simply invert the output. So whatever calculations you have going on between your input and your mixer, it simply gets inverted on the output. So that's where I reverse my controls if they're not right when I'm looking at my model setup. So now if I pull that elevator up, it's correct. Let's take a look at the ailerons as one more example. As you can see on channel one, I've also got this one inverted, it's lit right there. If I press that button and now move my stick to the right, you can see my poor aileron is also going up. That's incorrect. If I need to reverse just that channel, I can reverse channel one by making this inverted. And when I do that, that now goes down. The other thing you can do in outputs is you can limit your overall output. If you do need for some reason to ensure that the overall output can never exceed some value, you can set those limits here. And then it doesn't really matter what the input or mix calculation is, you can limit the final output to the receiver and your servos right here in your outputs. We're really not using the next couple of screens, so the curve screen, I don't have any curves to find in this example, so we'll skip over that, but if you do need to add a curve, here's where you'll do it. And then for global variables, also not using those in this example, so we'll skip those. That brings us to the logic screen, and we actually covered these earlier in the video, so we don't have to do that again, because nothing's changed. Next up are special functions, and this is where all the magic kind of happens. This is where you create alerts and you make things happen on the radio. So I'll just go over my special functions one by one. First special function is my throttle lock, and all that says is when the SH switch is in the down position, I want you to override channel three, which is where my throttle is, with a value of negative 100 and turn that on. Do not use zero here. You have to use negative 100, you gotta go all the way. Zero on Edge TX is the middle. So if you turn that on and set it to zero and then you activate it, it's gonna set your throttle to 50% power. That is equivalent to doing this with your radio. So make sure you use the value negative 100. I learned that a long time ago the hard way. Make sure you use negative 100. 
Special function two uses L05. If you recall to earlier, L05 works when I arm the craft and when I have telemetry. Special function two says when L05 goes active, go ahead and turn on SD logging. This is another really nice benefit of using the throttle lock in combination with telemetry because now you're serious and you probably want to start logging data. So I use that combo to indicate when I want my SD logs to start being populated. Next up is Instant Trim. Instant Trim and I go way back and it's always one of the most asked questions I get on a radio configuration. You need Instant Trim paired to a momentary switch. In my case, it's SF down. If you're paying attention, you might say, wait a minute, on my Radio Master, my SF switch is not a momentary switch. It is a two position switch. That's right, on my radio, I switched them. I put my momentary switch from SH over here on the side and I attach this to instant trim. So what happens when I pull SF toward me, instant trim goes active and I get an audible alert saying instant trim. Let me show you what instant trim does because every time I mention it, I get questions. I'm gonna back out to the main screen and I'm gonna go into my gyro off mode. I'm gonna reset all of my trims to zero. Okay. I've got all of my trims set to zero, my elevator is zero, my aileron is zero, and my rudder is zero. Now, let's say that I'm flying around out there having a good time, and I have some crazy trim that I need to deploy on a maiden. So I'm gonna pull my elevator and aileron here, and my rudder here, and while I'm holding those sticks like that, and I'm gonna exaggerate it, I'm gonna give it full deflection. While I'm holding those, that's what makes the airplane fly straight and level. When I hit the instant trim right here, what that does is it copies my stick positions to trim. You see how all three of those trims are now moved? Now I let go of my sticks and they recenter and look where my trims are for the aileron, elevator, and rudder. They've all moved to the extreme. That's what instant trim does. It takes your stick position and copies it to your trim value. Then you need to let go of your sticks and hopefully your plane should start flying right. So while you're flying, if you say, ah, that's a little too much, I need the aileron and elevator to be here, you can hit that instant trim again. If I go all the way up and I hit it again, watch what happens to my trim. See how they're back to center? Almost, looks like that one's off just a little bit. There you go, so back to center. That's what instant trim does. It takes your stick position and copies it to trim. It's a very handy feature on a Maiden. I've been using it for a very long time. Okay, that covers instant trim. Next up is special function number five, which says L04 play sound alarm clock. Now, if you remember back to the battery voltage logic, there are two states, the state that we're interested in and the state that we don't care about. So L04 is the thing that toggles back and forth between those two conditions. L04 goes active when L01 is hot. L01 goes hot when we are armed and our voltage drops below 22.5 for more than six seconds. When that happens, we're interested, L04 will go hot. L04 will go off when L03 happens. L03 happens when we either lock the throttle or we're greater than 22.5 volts. So L04 is the logical switch that we are gonna take action on when those two battery conditions exist. So I'll hit page right. And you can see special function number five says, when L04 goes active, play alarm clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and force L04 active by arming the model. And because my voltage is too low and we're armed, we now have that alert. And I have that alarm clock playing every five seconds. My throttle is locked. That turns that alert off because the throttle's locked. We don't care what the battery condition is. The next one is kind of interesting. This is special function number six, and what this one says is L05. Remember, L05 is our friend that says when we're armed and I have telemetry. Remember that one? So if we're armed and we have telemetry, go ahead and set the volume to max. Now you might say, wait a minute, why are you doing that? There was a case at the field one time, Fred was out flying and he didn't get an audible alert on his helicopter and he said, wait, what's going on? Well, it turns out he had his volume assigned to a switch, he turned it all the way down and then went flying. The problem with that, of course, is if you have all these alerts set up and your volume is turned down, you're not gonna hear them. So this is a little technique that says, hey, when L05 goes active, meaning I've got telemetry and my throttle's unlocked, I want my volume set to max. 
The one caveat I'd give you is be careful of what you choose for an alert. Because for me, I cannot stand having my radio chatter in my ear every two seconds about everything. So I'm very selective about the alerts that I want to hear. But when I do have an alert on my radio go off, I want to hear it. All right, it's downhill sliding from here. The eagle-eyed among you may notice that I skipped over special function number seven. That's fine, you can do that, it doesn't matter. These are just line definitions. They are in no particular relationship from one to the other. If a condition in a special function is triggered, the radio reacts, that's all that matters. So if you wanna skip a special function, you can. I don't know why I did in this case, but it doesn't matter, I did. Special function number eight says, when the SC switch is pushed into the away position, I play a track called Stabilizer Auto Level Mode, and that's only played once and not during startup. So I'm gonna put SC all the way up. Auto Level Mode. There's Auto Level Mode. SC in the middle position says Stabilizer On. Stabilizer On. And when SC is pushed down, it says Stabilizer, stabilizer Off. Stabilizer Off. The next set of audio prompts have to do with my rates. When the SB switch is in the up position, I have rate high play. High rate. There's high rate. SB mid is rate medium. Medium rate. And then SB down is rate low. Low rate. That's all that does. Three audio prompts to tell me what rates I'm in. If you remember back to the flight mode section of the video, I turned off trim five for flight mode zero, flight mode one and flight mode two. And the reason for that is because I claimed those as active switches in my setup. What special function 14 says is when I press five down, I wanna reset timer one. Let me show you what that looks like. We'll back out of the settings. You can see my timer says five minutes and 52. I'm just gonna press five down right here. Timer one reset. And when I do that, my timer one is reset. That's one of the reasons I reclaim these switches as momentary switches, because they were great for stuff like that. We'll go back to our special function list and continue on. Special function 15 says, when I press five down, I want to hear the audio prompt, timer one reset. And then finally, special function 16 says, when I press five up, I want to hear the value of my flight pack. So if I press five up, it tells me I've got 0 0.2 volts. So a nice little way to get an audio prompt on my voltage whenever I want it, and it's right next to my throttle. We only have a few more things to cover, and they have to do with cosmetics. I'm gonna hit the return page and go back to the main screen, and then I'm gonna show you how I set up all these top bar widgets. The first thing I'll do is press the telemetry button, and we'll click on this icon right here on the left, and then we'll hit set up widgets. And we do that, you've got four options for the top row. You notice that I've got flight zero. That is based on the offer Schmooly flights counter widget. There's a link in the description on how to set that up if you'd like to use it. I love having a flight counter on my planes and I pretty much use this on every single model I've got. That way I know how many times I've flown a particular airplane. You can set up that widget by clicking on widget settings and you can see the options here are switch. That is your throttle switch. The motor channel, in my case, channel three, that's where my motor is active. That's, so that's what the widget looks for, is the throttle has to be disarmed and it looks for activity on the motor switch. And then your duration in seconds on how long a flight has to occur before it counts. And then you can set the text color. I like white on my top bar because I use a dark blue background and I like white, it pops and shows up really well. The next widget is RX battery and I'm gonna show you how to set up these telemetry values in case you don't know how to do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove that widget. To configure one of these top bar spots for a telemetry value, click on the widget spot, hit select widget, and then scroll down. In this case, we're gonna use value. So scroll down and find value right there. And then under source, click on that and scroll down to telemetry right here on the bottom left. And then in my case, I want that one to be RX bat and I want the color to be white. So we'll set the slider until the text is white. Then we'll click on save and then just click somewhere else and you can see we've got RxBat right there at the top using our telemetry sensor from RxBat to show me I have less than the volt. The rest of these are pretty much configured the same way. You can go into widget settings and change the color, alignment, labels, all of that good stuff, but that's how you set up your top bar widgets. For the first page, notice my layout has one box here on the right and two boxes here on the left. Once you figure out what layout you wanna use, you can click set up widgets and then click on the open space, hit select widgets. And for your model image to be shown, you can just set that one up to be model info right there. And that's what will display your image, 
and then click anywhere on the open space and that's what allows you to show your model image and the name that you gave this particular model in your settings. And then for the other two boxes, I'm simply using flight timers. So I'll click on this one and I'll remove it and we'll re-add it. So I'll click select widget and then we'll go down to timer and I will select timer number one. And I just back out of that by hitting somewhere else. And there we go, there's flight timer number one. And the same thing works for flight timer number two. You just click on that field, hit select widget, and then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see timer and you can choose timer number two. So timer number two, that's our total flight time. And that's how we set up our widgets. Since you stuck around this long, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. Now that you've got your model template all set up and working the way you want it, you've got a good baseline configuration, save it as a template and that way you can reuse it next time you need to make a model and you don't have to go through all of this. We're gonna get into that by long pressing the model button and when we let go, we'll be brought to the model selection screen. Notice that the Express LRS fixed wing template is selected. I'm gonna long press on that and then I'm gonna hit save as template and it gives me the option, save as template, express LRS, FW template, I'm gonna hit yes. Now that I've got a template saved, whenever I hit new model, I can click on this personal button and there it is, it's right there, express LRS fixed wing template. If I click on that, it's gonna create a new model with all of those settings that we just covered. And there it is. Obviously we covered a great deal of material today and in your use case, certain things might be different. Your throttle lock might be different. Your gyro channel might be different. Your weights and expos might be different. Your output directions might be different. This was really meant to give you a roadmap and some ideas on how you can organize a basic model template for an RC plane based on quite a bit of experience in working on these templates for my own models. I think this is a very functional setup. I fly with this on just about every fixed wing plane I have with some minor variations. If you appreciate the work that goes into making videos like this, it'd be really cool if you'd smash that thumbs up button. If you like this kind of content, subscribe and hit the bell so you know new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. The first thing you'll do is long press the model button and that will bring you to the model selections. Really? Again, this is one of those things you could completely skip and your model will, will, will It's all downhill sledding from here. The rest of them are really just audio prompts. So for special function, it's all downhill sledding from here. It's all downhill sledding from here. For the eagle eye, it's all downhill sledding for here.